Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today, finally I'm back and I'm going to be painting up the Goliath truck for Gene Sealer Colts. Now, I'm not painting one or two, but three, which is kind of why this took a long time <laughs> to paint. Sorry about that. But before we get into the painting, I wanted to compare the boxes and manuals from these two uh, boxes, essentially. So, they essentially redid all the boxes when they redid their Warhammer 40k logo. And a lot of the box work and art changed, but also a lot of the information given. So, on the left is the old, on the right, well, in this picture, is the new. Now, starting off, one of the big things is the back. The back, uh, the pictures and all the stuff on the right is the newest stuff, and it just shows you very little information if you want to like get inspiration for what the whole model should look like or all the little uh, bits and bobs the older version on the left is far superior because uh, essentially like you get angled shots multiple angled shots and stuff and you're able to see a lot of details you normally would not be able to see with these two kind of flat basic images on the right so a lot more information was given for like ideas and stuff and the small little weird random things that would be here and there so the old had more information to inspire you with now on to the manuals now the only thing of note is the new manuals have colors in the background and color-coded pieces which is much better than the previous manuals because sometimes you could misunderstand what you're supposed to attach or you won't notice this one little tiny piece off in the corner and you might forget to uh, get it off the sprue clean it prep it and put it on but I will say that uh, the older manuals are much thinner because there's a lot less, or they get straight to the point more. So, some more manuals, but overall I prefer the newer manuals. They tend to be better for finding all the exact parts you need and stuff. It just makes it harder to screw up, essentially. I will point out, however, that uh, the sprue, the piece is 37. On the manual, it's 35. So, another one of these mess ups, GW. Thank you for that. Now we've assembled the model up to the point that's going to get in the way of painting. Uh, the back uh, is uncovered or is separate, the gas tank is separate, the troopers are separate, all the guns and their many pieces are separate, wheels are separate, the uh, dozer blade thing is separate, the exhaust pipe is separate, and the guns are separate. And yeah. And so first we're going to start off with some milliput to try to fix in some of the blends and stuff, and man, it did not go well. <laughs> I then went and magnetized all the guns. Now, fun fact, part of the reason why this video took a long time to come out is because I discovered that I did not have enough magnets for this job, so I had to order new ones. And then when they came in, I discovered another thing. I couldn't actually magnetize most of the pieces I needed because I had no way of properly drilling in. And so then I had to order some new drill bits specifically for this magnetizing job. And so that took longer. <laughs> So, a good week was wasted due to really poor resource management. And then finally, here are all the paints we used throughout this kit. The uh, only thing missing is the Gamasol Mineral Spirit, and I forgot to show a picture of the brown oil paint I used, but that's about it. Right. Now, before we get into painting, I hate showing the build process because it's not a part of the channel really. But uh, I'm going to magnetize the feet of the troopers, so basically I take a razor blade and mark the center. Then I take Army Painter, Army Painter 3mm drill bit and drill into one foot each. I also drill uh, <coughs> into the floorboards of the uh, vehicle, which I'll show later how I do that. And the front of the uh, trucks, I trim off and sand down the front parts of the truck so that I can place magnets on the front of the truck and the bottom part of the uh, dozer blade and allows me to adhere them. Later on, I don't remember if I show this, but essentially if you do it on the bottom part, uh, there's a top and bottom part of the front anchor where it hooks onto the uh, dozer blade. If you do it on the bottom, the dozer blade will not attach properly. If you do it on the top, uh, it's more noticeable, but uh, it attached the whole thing uh, attaches seamlessly so on the bottom I had to put some green putty over the magnet to sort of force an artificial angle so that the dozer blade will attach at an angle and then force itself to become completely flush with the truck so oof. now before we get into painting more pictures so with green putty I make 
giant wads and then attach it to the bottom of the trucks and then apply giant magnets onto the bottom. The reason is so a magnetic tray, uh, so it's low to the ground enough that it'll be right there with the wheels and so it can attach inside a magnetic case and will hold it. And that that's pretty much it. And now, after tons of slideshows and no painting at all, now we begin the painting. First by priming. We prime everything with ultra, uh, with a, this ultra matte black car uh, paint. Uh, basically, you can pick it up at an auto shop. I use this stuff because you can use it in any weather, cold, damp, muggy, whatever, and it works well because it's made for outside. And it adheres to plastic, so that's good. All right, with administrative gray, ashen gray, and gray sierra, the other two colors I don't use for different reasons. Doombull brown, I ended up not using because I would have ch I swapped it out, decided to do it at a different step later. And Ulthuan gray because when I opened it, I realized I did not have enough <laughs> to actually complete this project, so I swapped out with Celestia gray. So administrative gray, ashen gray, gray sierra. So basically, what I did was. I started with administrative gray in the airbrush and essentially what I did is I just applied a simple layer all over, uh, retained some of the shadows from the black just very subtly. So basically I painted the sides, the top, whatever, and just as a base flat color. A little bit of the black is still showing through just a little bit here and there but that's fine. Then I go on to Eschen Gray and I do this to create the shadows specifically so I spray this on the underside where the wheels are, bottom half ish essentially where there's going to be shadows and stuff and dark <laughs> and then i move on to celestia gray because it was close in the colors and i actually had a lot more of this than ulthuan gray and then i applied this from top down sort of at a 45 degree angle and so i've airbrushed tanks before a long time ago like over a decade ago and for some reason they don't age well i don't know how that's possible but essentially higher contrasting colors when using an airbrush tends to work better than small incremental changes. So this is pretty bright and coming down and creates uh, obvious light dark shadows and you can see like the contrast from like one top panel to a side panel and stuff and so I went with this and it's good. Then we went with Grace here and a Artis Opus large brush. A good dry brush is very important for this because higher quality, uh, these brushes are really good and they apply paint very well for this as uh, it's, it's night and day. And so basically I used that with Grace here and I dry brushed all over. This picked out all the edges on all the random small pieces, big pieces, all the bolts, nuts and all that stuff. And that was the basic coloring for the chassis. All right, with Uriel Yellow, Abaddon Black, and Dawn Stone, we're gonna paint the uh, hazard stripes that are all over, especially on the front shield. So, essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna take Uriel Yellow and apply it all over. Two to three coats, because it's yellow. Yeah, this issues and problems. Now, uh, one thing I did do is I took a .25 millimeter micro pen, and then I drew out the basic lines for all the hazard stripes. And then I filled it in with Abaddon Black, essentially. And then I took Dawnstone once it was done, and then highlighted the Abaddon Black part, the edges, because there's like these little ridges inside the uh, dozer blade or something. I don't know how to put it, gaps. And essentially I used this to highlight that. And yeah, uh, this took a while, many multiple layers of the yellow and the black, but yeah. Alright, with some Blood Angels Red, water down kind of a bit, I use this to create the front red mark symbol on the front of the truck. Essentially I find that these wash or contrast paints and stuff are much easier to do these like symbols and, and stuff because they flow off the brush really easily. They uh, don't like uh, create ridges or physical parts. Uh, essentially they're much easier to uh, apply these details onto and draw basically on the model. 
All right, with contour blue, Kalidor sky, and Baharoth blue, we're gonna paint the uh, viewing slits on the trucks. So basically all we do is contour blue base, fill in with Kalidor sky, and then with pure Baharoth blue, we're gonna paint basically a uh, use. Uh, a line on the left side of each slit, a line on the right side, and a line on the bottom. Basically makes a U. Now it is high contrast, it's very bright and stuff compared to the rest, but I'm like, you know what? The, the vision slit is so small that a high contrast thing makes it stand out. So, Alright, so with Troll Slayer Orange, Uriel Yellow, and not Dorn Yellow, because uh, my Dorn Yellow kind of sucks. <laughs> So I take Troll Slayer Orange, and it's just the lights in the back and stuff, and uh, the front, and the dozer blade essentially. Base layer of Troll Slayer Orange, then one to one of Troll Slayer Orange and Uriel Yellow on the top 40%-ish. And then pure Uriel Yellow dot on uh, like the center-ish or whichever. And that's pretty much it. Now with Black Templar Contrast, Tronal Slayer, Orange, Euro, Yellow, I basically do what I just did before. Except with Black Templar Contrast, I use this to paint the shadows into where the lights are in the front. Uh, not the dozer blade. And then with Troll Slayer, Orange, yeah, basically. Troll Slayer, Orange over the lights. And then uh, Pure Uriel, Uriel, Yellow in the center-ish. And the details are just going to be ironed out when I get to the metal steps. All right, with Morn Fang Brown, Agrax Red Shade. This is just quickly, so a lot of the uh, bars or like handlebars on the vehicle have like leather wraps or something that could be leather, your choice. But basically, I just wanted to do it quickly. So Morn Fang Brown all over, Agrax Earth Shade Pure all over. Then with a good dry brush using the Artist Opus ones, I dry brushed uh, with Morn Fang Brown again. It hit the edges and it worked pretty decent. And while I was at it, I used Agrax Earthshade and a pretty decent brush to just tap on every single bolt to add shadow to it. Uh, this took a while. All right, just some quick details. Abaddon Black, Corn Red. There are two wires attached to the right side where the gun is, and so Abaddon Black is one, Corn Red is the other. Easy, simple, done. All right, so essentially, with Xandri Dust and Agrax Earthshade, I'm gonna paint the the hardcover tops for the rock grinders have these tarps. Basically, Xandri dust all over, pure Agrax earth shade all over, not diluted with anything. Uh, essentially, I'm gonna be using oil paints on this model to help bring it up, so I'm mostly doing foundational stuff. And this is a foundational stuff for future oil paint. All right, with Dawnstone, Black Templar, and Golem and Flesh, we're gonna paint uh, more random details. There's a lot of random details. I mean, the chassis was the big chunk of it, but the rest is just random crap. Dawnstone, dry brush, all the tires, adding the edges and whatever. I then moved on to uh, Golem and Flesh and applied it on all the metal panels I'm gonna have, like the graded metal and stuff, handlebars and all that stuff, as a base color. And it worked pretty well. And then took Dawnstone, or, uh, Chaos Black, whatever it was, Black Templars, that was it, and I applied it on these like car battery things that are on the back on the tops, and that's about it. Alright, with Vallejo Steel, which is just a dark metal, and Black Templar Contrast Paint, we're going to work on the metals some more. So basically what I do is first with the steel, is I apply this all over every single gun. Oh uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> I apply this on over every single gun uh, and uh, like these metal vents and stuff that are on the chassis of the vehicle and the uh, wheel, uh, the metal parts of the wheel, I have no idea what they're called, I'm not a car guy. And uh, after that we then take a sponge, the type you get from like uh, 
the GW carrying cases. I have a bunch of these. Trash carrying case, by the way, but I still have them and the sponges are eternal. So I took it, uh, dab a bunch on the edge to create like a speckle stuff, and then I just start pressing it into the metal grating and plates that had the Goleman flush applied, including the uh, handlebar parts. And this just added random sharpness to it and stuff, added some texture, character to the model. And then once all of that was done, I then took uh, Black Templar contrast paint and I watered it down heavily, very heavily. And it creates a blackish blue kind of thing. And then I just applied this all over the metal that I just did. This added shadow everywhere, including the metal grating, uh, metal parts where people would stand on, stuff like that. It added more character to the metal. And then after that, I took a dry brush and with the steel, I re-dry brushed lightly on all their firearms and guns. And that was it. All right, with Vallejo Copper, uh, which is just a copper color that flows well, and Agrax Earthshade. Uh, so essentially the copper, I put it on random pieces of some of the guns, uh, the tip of the flamethrower bit, uh, basically the tips of all the guns and stuff to add some more color personality to them, to the uh, auto gun and stuff like that. And then I took Agrax Earthshade and I applied it in several steps on like the exhaust fan or exhaust port thingy multiple times to show like a progression of clean to grimy. I'm just doing very little on these small details because uh, this project has taken too long. Alright, with Iron Warrior's paint, which is just a dark metal, I use this to basically uh, finish up any little issues with metal details, like the wheels on the front of the dozer blade, and the metal parts along the lights. I can never get these lights right, that's why I tried this orangish color uh, type way, but it, eh, it's meh. Alright, so I must have forgotten to take a reference picture of it, but basically I take Eschen Grey and a good brush that's able to haint, maintain a lot of paint, and basically I do uh, like chips on the armor. We're just going to do a simple one. I know you can go heavy detail on it, but like my patience is wearing thin. I've been stuck on this project for now five weeks, like a, over a month. I mean, I haven't put anything out for March, goodness. So essentially... Uh, basically the edges or sometimes even during the flat planes I just put like dots and dashes that's it dots dashes and occasionally slashes on the edges of parts of the paint and that creates like the effects of chipping and stuff that's it dots dashes and a, a few slashes here and there now, this is more of an artist thing it's random you just feel it out kind of but like yeah a thin a thin fine point dots dashes and slashes Alright, with uh, Burnt Sienna Oil Paint and Gamsol, this is just basically mineral spirits. Uh, always make sure you have some ventilation around because this stuff can mess you up. Maybe. I don't know, I haven't noticed any effects, but then again I have like an air filter on the whole time. Alright, so basically how I do this is I, t I pour a little bit out of the Burnt Sienna, and then I give it a very small amount of the mineral spirits to help make it flow better. Uh, we're going for a paint, essentially. A sludge. And so with a fine tip brush, we basically paint thin lines and some dots and dashes here and there. And then we take another brush that's a fatter brush that holds like the pure mineral spirits and then we just like tap 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 over what we just painted. And what this does is like soften uh, the uh, paint that we've just applied and 
depending on how much you apply, uh, like repeatedly stabbing it is a way if you can control it. And essentially the thing will go from a hard line to a soft, gradual thing. Uh, this is more of a practiced, kind of artistic thing. It essentially creates rust spots and places where the rust goes through. And so after the fact you can go back and just do a little dot here and there of the burnt sienna again and creates more stronger parts. So if you like lightly touch it once, it's like a strong place of rust. If you like touch it repeatedly, it helps dilute it with the mineral spirits and lets the rust flow out essentially. And I do this all over and adds a lot of character to the model. Alright, now with Burnt Umber, we basically take this, uh, turn it into a sludge with a little bit of uh, mineral spirits, and then apply it onto the tarp. And then we immediately, immediately wipe it away. And uh, the tarp is done. We then begin to fully assemble the model. Alright, a day has passed. The oil paints have basically baked, cooked on, they're pretty solid on there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some Vallejo pigment powder, uh, some braid natural or natural umber. Essentially what we're going to do is we're just going to apply this all over the wheels, bottom part, um, basically the bottom half, and things like that. Add some more character to the model. And yeah. Alright, with AK Interactive Terrain's Dark Earth Diorama. Man, I'm bringing out a lot of specialist tools for this. Uh, uh, so essentially what I do is I take this, apply it onto like my wet palette, and put water on it until it becomes a wet mud. Then I take the other half of the sponge, or the other side, dip, dip, dip it into there, and then I just tap it all over the wheels, bottom parts, stuff, add another layer of this <coughs> mud effect all over, making it look really worn and used because I don't think the GSC really clean their underground mining equipment and I'm calling it done because I'm done with this model <laughs> screw this I'm done I ain't dealing with this anymore <laughs> I there are a few more details that could be done afterwards I could paint the uh, scopes uh, the lights on the scopes and stuff like that but I don't care I'm done I could uh, do some, uh, I do notice that when I put it all together that the dozer blades, the back parts, like are way too clean compared to the rest, it's like an oversight. Maybe later in the future uh, when I'm bringing out those colors I'll just quickly bring the dozer blades over and redo that. But I'm not doing it anymore, I'm done, <laughs> I'm sick and tired of this kit, I'm done. Uh, things to note, interestingly the uh, pigment powder really really liked those magnets for some odd reason. No clue. Uh, apart from that, um, so the overall idea, I should have said this at the beginning, but the idea of this is to really rely on specialist tools, the AK Interactive Dark Earth, pigment powder, oils especially, to add flavor, texture, character to the model, life to it. Uh, because uh, my basic painting on it will be very limited and very straightforward since there's three of them so I'm not gonna put in this isn't gonna be a masterpiece I'm not interested in going super hard on three tanks uh, and so I basically uh, with the paints and everything I laid the foundation and then for all the special details and stuff and the character to be drawn out from just the pigment powders mud and oil paints that's it 
So I created a foundation and then moved on to that. And so it looks pretty good. It looks like a decently worn tank. Uh, some parts may be a bit too clean, but like, eh, whatever. Uh, overall, the magnetization went really well, but that literally cost me a week from not having the correct stuff and ordering it one at a time. But I'm good now for quite a while. I mean, they sold those magnets in groups of 400, so I think I'm good for a while. Uh, apart from that, the drill bits worked really well, so I was able to apply those really well. I should have had those years ago, goodness. Um, the models are very straightforward and simple. The airbrush really sped things up and add some character and depth to it. Uh, the metals uh, that the guys would stand on, the sheet metal and stuff, turned out great. Gullum and flesh, and then like metal, like uh, basically dry brushed essentially over or like pushed on with a sponge, did really well. And all these other things, it made the metal look really good and really believable and stuff like that. And yeah, uh, the magnetization project worked really well. I now have three Goliath trucks or three Goliath tanks. I am not making any more because, uh, you know, rule of three or these guys are 155 points of disappointment. But like eventually, one day, their codex coming soon may redeem these guys. Uh, so we'll see. So uh, overall, a very simple project. I just... So here's the thing, when I barely worked on these guys, it's just like, I would look over and see them on the table and be like, nah, later. And then eventually, like, a month passed, it's like, dang it, I gotta do these. Uh, it's just if the project is too large, it like feels too daunting to even really continue at times. Like, all these models, I could have done, uh, each of them, they would have taken a week. Would it be annoying for me to put out three videos of the exact same thing? Yes, but I have literally done that before. I have like th three Beast of Nurgle videos, one after another, of me trying to get this a specific shade of pale white and failing every time. <laughs> and uh, I do have like three or four, uh, I don't know, was it Lord of, not Change, a uh, uh, Magakin of Nurgle character. I have like three or four of them on, but those were over a long period of time and there was vast improvement over them. Uh, but essentially, overall, this character, or this uh, models look good, they turn out pretty well, they have a lot of character, what flaws they have are easily, like, ignored because the oil paints do a lot to add character, color, and flavor to it, the pigment powder adds good use and wear, and the uh, mud also amplifies that. And uh, yeah, the only thing odd is their guns are really clean. The I would expect their weapons to be clean. There may be a billion weapons like them, but they need those to work. I mean, is the GSE really going to care if they have muddy wheels and some mud on their siding of their vehicles? No. But they are going to care if their weapons are clogged. Yeah. So, alright. I'm back. Good to go. Uh, the next one is going to be a fantasy. Or not Warhammer. I, I gotta get to that tug on it. It's going to be Age of Sigmar. Uh is going to be the next one and so like the video if you like the video share if you want to share comment if you want to comment and more to come bye